Hey everyone, Andrew here, and today's another book review. I apologize that these have been a bit more sporadic and random than they used to be. I did try to stick to a schedule, and I have been doing my best to that, but the problem is I'm not reading like I used to. I used to be doing lots of doctor's appointments, and then I would also have breaks at work where I would read, but um, my number of doctor visits in a month has decreased it down to maybe one or two at most, and I don't I I moved up in my work to a position where you don't really get breaks you just get a lunch and that's it which is fine I don't have a huge problem with that but it makes reading difficult this current book the one I'm going to talk about I started this back in March and I read 100 pages in the first day because I was on a 5 hour flight and then I only just finished this in July so <laughs> Yeah, it took a while. So the name of the book is Ink Exchange by Melissa Marr. And this is actually the second in a series. Uh, the first book was called Wicked Lovely. And I have not read that one. I have it. I kind of skipped it because someone really recommended this book. And it was like, the second she finished it, she gave it to me and said, hey, you need to read this. It's really good. And I trust this person. They usually have similar tastes to mine. So I'm like, all right, I'll give this a look. And right off the bat, I can tell you that the what I was hoping for with this one would explain stuff that happened in the first one so I could understand what was going on. It barely does that. To be fair also, though, this book really doesn't even explain its own plot. So all of the vagueness is intentional. So the story follows a woman named Leslie, who's 17, and she's... A high school student who's had a really rough life. Basically, her mother died, her father is a drunk who's never around, and her brother is a drug dealer who's been taking his own supply. And if he's on weed, he's okay. He's just kind of an ass. If he's on anything stronger, he's a monster. And we find out really quickly that her brother, at a certain point, drugged her and then let his customers have their way with her. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of what the tone of this book is. This is a young adult book that is very dark and adult in its tone. And having had this and having these dark things, Leslie wants something to get that's entirely her own, that some that can't be corrupted by her family and these events and this and the other. So she constantly spends her time at this tattoo parlor wanting a tattoo, wanting something to cover her body that is entirely herself and can't be damaged by other people. So, one of the days at this tattoo parlor, she runs into this shady-looking gentleman named Ariel, who has a really elaborate tattoo on his arm. Ariel turns out to be not a human. He is actually a fairy. I would I would equate this to more like being a fae, so he's just a dark spirit that has magical powers. And there are multiple courts in the fae universe. There's the summer court, the winter court, and the dark court, and Ariel is the king of the dark court. And the dark court is a beings that feed off dark emotions such as anger, hate, lust, pain, suffering. His court has been living wealthy and well because there had been many years of a war between the Summer Kingdom and the Winter Kingdom. However, the events of the first book led to there being a new Summer Queen and a new Winter Queen who created peace between their two people. And that Summer Queen's name is Aslan, and her and Leslie are actually friends. Aslan has brought some of her fairy people into her life, has done her best to forbid her fairy court to interact with any of her human friends, which has been really hard for one of the fairies named Nail, who has a strong interest in Leslie. And she has a really strong interest in him. She's met him. He has a, a human form, which is all scarred and damaged and we find out that he used that nail used to be part of the dark court 
that he used to be Ariel's second command. But Ariel tortured and did a lot of dark things to Nail, which caused him to leave and join the Summer Court. So Ariel replaced him with his current second named Gabriel, who has his hounds, which are may or may not be real dogs or just people dark spirits. I have no idea. It got really confusing when he kept talking about the hounds. I kept picturing him as a person with, like, dozens of tattoos of dogs that would pop out and attack things, but that's just how my brain translated it. I'm pretty sure that is not the author's intent. That's just how I saw it, because it, that sounded interesting to me. And yeah, Gabriel doesn't do much in the story, but he's kind of an interesting character. To be fair, none of the characters really do anything in the story. They're just somewhat interesting. Anyway, back to Leslie. So Leslie has this huge interest in Nail, but they don't ever talk or have any real connection. And Leslie goes to the tattoo parlor run by a gentleman named Rabbit. And Rabbit has made a deal with Ariel to try this new process of feeding his kingdom called the Ink Exchange. And Leslie goes in the back, just has you put aside money that should have been paid for, like, the cable in her family to get this tattoo. And she's flipping through the books, and she comes across this design of two eyes and shapes, and it really intrigues her. And this turns out to be a design made by Ariel. And she agrees to have it tattoo on her, and Rabbit infuses the ink with Ariel's blood, connecting the two of them Physically and spiritually, basically. So, Leslie starts to feel lighter and more energetic and have different feelings, but also has started leaning towards darker intentions, and as the tattoo is finally completed, she realizes that uh, who she's connected to and what's going on, and she starts to see the fairy world as what it is, not as it's hidden from the regular world. During all this, Ariel has taken a strong fascination in Leslie because he wants this to succeed, but also because of who she is and what she does. So he starts following her, which pisses off Nail, who tries to get closer to her to try to protect her, but it's already too late. And Leslie finds herself drawn to Ariel, and when the tattoo's complete, agrees to join him in his dark court and leaves her family home and Ariel may or may not have her family brutally murdered I don't know we never hear from them again I wouldn't be surprised so basically she goes and lives with him at his hotel and he subjects her to a lot of these dark horrific things to feed his people basically she has to be around and experience dark and evil emotions. While all this is going on, her own emotions are turned off. She doesn't feel anything anymore. She becomes numb to the world and everything around her. And as the realization of that starts to hit her, she starts becoming very despondent and even tries to kill herself a couple times. So Ariel has to start watching her all the time, worried of what she's going to do to herself or to the people. And during all this, Nail has gotten in a fight with the king of the Summer Fairies because he wouldn't let N Nail tell Leslie what's going on or protect her in any way. So Nail decides that he's just going to leave his court and becomes a nomad without a faction and really doesn't do much of anything. Um, Leslie ends up going and finds him and they make a plan to get rid of the tattoo. So they use um, fire from the Summer Queen and ice from the Winter Queen and use that to burn off the tattoo. It doesn't entirely work, but it damages the link to a point that they that Ariel can no longer feed on Leslie, but they're still connected emotionally. Uh, Leslie returns to Ariel and tells him... I wish the best for you. I do actually still care about you. That said, I never want to see you again. I want nothing to do with your world. And says basically the same thing to Nail. And goes off to college and has a normal life. 
uh, Ariel goes to Nail and tells him that do not worry about her, that she'll be protected. There's nothing that he has to ever, that she, she'll be fine for the rest of her life. And basically tells Nail that he is now going to be the new king of the Dark Court, which Nail does not want at all. Ariel's like, well, that's fine. Just give it to someone else. I really don't care. And Nail comes to the realization that, oh, there's a lot of dark people in the Dark Court. They, they get control. They will rage war on the humans and cause all this trouble. So I can't just give this off to anybody. I have to find the right person. Just like Ariel had to find the right person to take him over. And that's how the book ends. And it's kind of meh. It's kind of a meh ending. It's like, all right, well, it's really kind of interesting though to look at it because it has a lot of connection to um, drug addiction and seeking numbness. Because it's like basically to get over the pain and darkness of what her brother did to her, Leslie gives in to the overuse of something that ends up completely numbing her to the world and everything around her. And then when the realization that she's hit rock bottom hits, she has to do dramatic things to try to get over that. Losing all emotions is such an actual dark and horrible thing to have kind of happen. It's an interesting look at it, but it's very vaguely told. Unfor like, I could g break this thing for you down chapter by chapter, but nothing really happens in this book. It's like, oh, Leslie... Go decides to get a tattoo. Leslie gets tattoo. Tattoo makes her numb. Tattoos gets Leslie wakes up, gets tattoo removed, goes on with her life. There's not a lot going on for a book that's 300 pages, but it's a lot more about the psychological stuff. It's about figuring about trying to do the right thing in a dark world and do how sometimes you have to do dark things for the betterment of your people. It's confusing and weird and vague and that's all intentional. It's clear that this author doesn't want to explain these things to you. And there's a lot of interesting side characters like Gabriel and the Hounds are kind of interesting and I I do actually kind of want to read Wicked Lovely to find out more about Aslan and the Summer King because what little I got of them, like Aslan is a weird kind of character who has her human boyfriend, who she's like, um, uh, absolutely loves, and then she's also in a relationship with the Summer King, who she seems to tolerate, and he seems to be an asshole. So I don't, I don't know what to make of them. And it is weird. I was like, I've, I've come across books where I started in the middle before. One of the previous series that I talked about, um, the Asling Gray series, I started on book three, and I understood what was going on for the most part, even though. There was, like, two full books of past history I didn't know about. I was able to keep up and be find this interesting. This one is just kind of there. It's interestingly written. It's interestingly told, for the most part. But it isn't compelling. And it really doesn't have a lot going for it. It's, um, it's one of those interesting ways of taking a real concept like drug abuse and giving it a fantasy element to it. That said, I can't really recommend this to anyone. I think it's all right. I would give it a four, a three and a half to a four, but I don't know if I would read it again, and I don't think know if I would recommend it to anybody. It's like it's kind of interesting because I had two different friends give me the like the friend. There was one friend, who, the friend who gave me the book was like, "Yeah, this is really good." Another friend told me, "Oh, that book was horrible. I did not like it." So it's kind of in between. I think it's fine. I kind of want to read more by this author just to see what they do. But I am also not compelled to read more now. I may read more at a later point. We'll see. So yeah, that was my opinion on Ink Exchange. If I ever get around to reading Wicked Lovely or anything else in the series, I will let you guys know and tell you what my thoughts on it. Happy reading, y'all.